Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Yisai. We are now in our outdoor Torah Anytime Estates. This is called Torah Anytime Estates. This is the Garden of Eden, the Gan Eden. When you learn Torah, it's always Gan Eden. Now we haven't been on the air last week, uh, Pajas um, Eschanan, because last week we were getting ready for a chasana. The chatuna will be this week on Thursday in Muncie, New York, for my last youngest daughter. And um, we are we're a little busy last week, but now the chasana is two, three days away. We're going to do as we did last year this outdoor. Um, Sheer out here in the Gan Eden of Hashem, the beautiful green grass, and here is some kind of a pebble or something. Some botany, botanist or bio, a botanist will tell me what this is. I don't know if it's an acorn or what kind of maple tree. Here's a here's a, a chestnut, some kind of valuable chestnut thing. Let us talk about what happened this week called um, Tu Ba'av. That was on Monday. Tu B'Av, the 15th day of Av. When we were kids, we didn't call it Tu. We called it Chamisha Osa B'Av. Like the other one in the spring was not called Tu B'Shvat. It was called Chamisha Osa B'Shvat. Now this is Tu B'Av. What is Tu B'Av? Tu B'Av means the 15th day of Av. That's less than a week away from Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is the 9th. 9 and 7 is 16, but this is 15. Why is that such a great holiday? Lo hoyo yomim li Yisrael. There were no greater holiday days to Yisrael. Ke chamisha osa be'av and yom hakipurim, and the day of Yom Kippur. Why? Because in those days, the, b- b- the young girls, unmarried, used to go out in the kromim, in the vineyards, Yom Kippur. After this, the whole avod in the base of English was over, which was chatzos, 12 o'clock. Because remember, they started Yom Kippur service an hour and a half before sunrise. At Alosa Shacha, by, by the time the Alosa Shacha was 4:30 or something, they already was filled with hundreds of thousands of people in the Azara of the Beis Hamikdash, and they did the carbon of Shachris and the carbon of Musa, and the Azazel was sent away by 12 o'clock. Katzot, it was all over. So then the girls used to go, unmarried girls who wanted the shidduch, went into the Krum and vineyards, very romantic place, and with the Bachrim. <laughs> that wouldn't pass today, but the Mishnah talks about it. They went in there with the Bachrim, and they said, Bachar, pick up your eyes and take a look. Don't look at beauty if they weren't beautiful. They look at the Mishpacha. Don't look at the Mishpacha. Look, take a look at the money, the Kesef, if they had Kesef. Or whatever, if they didn't have money and Kesef, but they had good Midos. Look at the Midos that we have. Pick up your eyes, and they all wore the same white garments, rich or poor, the unmarried girls. They wore the same garments, and so no one should be jealous. And lo, and the men got married. They found wives. They was was chas um, v'shol on Valentine's Day. It was like in American culture. We call that Sadie Hawkins Day. <laughs> Look back in American old culture. That was when they married up men and women with a shotgun. Anyhow, this was chas a million times more kodesh than that. But it was a day where the made shaduchim. Yom Kippur, when there was no yetsaharah, and on chamisha asar be'av. Why? Because Chamisha Azab Av is already, the, the day is getting shorter. Because the sh- longest day and the shortest night all over the world is the summer solstice, called the Kufaz Cheshvan. Uh, Tishrei Cheshvan, no, it was Nisna Ir Sivan. Tammuz, the Kufaz Tammuz. Tammuz is around June 22nd. June 22nd is the shortest night, longest day. In this area of New York, which is 41 degrees latitude and 74 degrees longitude, we have 15 days of hours of day and, and 9 hours of night. That's 24 hours. And then 6 months after that, exactly 6 months later, we have the Tekufas um, Kis Tegua Teves. That's 15 hours a night and 9 hours a day. So it's the shortest day. Today we have the longest day, a month ago. Now it's the July 26th. That was uh, June 22nd. That was, so when the day was getting shorter, the night was getting longer, so they, you notice they, they used to say a man should add a few minutes of learning because the night is longer. And if you add to your day of learning, God will add to your life. It says so. 
So there was a low Hoya Yom and Tov so there weren't greater holidays in Yisrael than Kamisha Asa Be'av and Yom Kippurim. That was when they got married. Why that day? Because it was a week after Tisha B'Av. What's the connection? Because in the Midbar, when the Jews, when the Maraglim stayed 38 days in Eretz Yisrael, God punished them. Shana la, uh, la, uh, shana, uh, yom la shana, yom la shana, a day for a year, a day for a year, 38 years in a midbar. Should say a year, a, day, a year for a day. Why does it say a day for a year? It says, uh, uh, shana li, uh, yom la uh, it say, should say yom la shana, uh, uh, shana la yom. It should say a year for a day. They say 38 days, they say 38 years. Why does it say yom la shana, yom la shana? You should say shana la yom. The answer is no. God's not going to punish them during the whole year except one year, one day a year. Yom Lashon, one day in the year they're going to die on Tisha B'Av. Because the Moroccan came back on the 8th of Av and they cried that night. All the Jews said, yeah, we believe them. They're giants there. We can't get into Eretz Israel. Can't go back to Mitzrayim. That's destroyed. Can't go into Eretz Tanan. The giants are there. Uh, we have to die out here in the Midbar. So Hashem said, you don't have trust in me. I'm going to give you Yom Lashon. One day a year you're all going to die. So if you divide 39 into three, 603,550 men between 20 and 60, it comes out 15,000 plus a little bit. So they all dug their graves, the heir of Tisha B'Av, anyone who came out of Mitzrayim between 20 and 60, and he went in the grave. And those who survived got up and lived another year. Those who died were in the grave. And every year, every Tisha B'Av, one day a year, they died. So they needed 38 years to 30, 38 days. Um, they found 15,000 and a fraction. If you multiply... Um, 38 into 603,550 you get 15,000 something <coughs> the last year they all dug their graves on the day before Tisha B'Av, they got into Tisha B'Av, if they were between 20 and 60 when they left Mitzrayim and you know what, none died so they said maybe we have the wrong calculation maybe it's not the ninth of Av so they waited another day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 by the time they came to 15 it was full moon they said certainly we're not going to die anymore they were so happy they made a yontem. The last year they didn't die. So according to, uh, if you may do the calculations, they only, if they didn't die in 39 years, only 38 years, then some say it was 16,000 every year. Oh, you do the calculation. But they were so happy, they didn't, that's one of why Hamisha Azabah is a happy day. Second, the first reason I told you was that the, the Shidduch day. There's another reason. The dead of Beitar were allowed to be buried. After the, um, the uh, Romans destroyed the second base of Mikdash Titus. They, 65 year, years later, uh, Bar Kokhba made a revolution, and base of Mikdash was destroyed in the year 70, so 65 and 70 is the year 135 C- CE. They destroyed Beitar with 100,000 people, and they didn't let them bury the bodies. The bodies stayed on top of the ground, not disintegrating for 52 years. The day they allowed them to bury the, uh, was, uh, the, the, bury the bodies of Beitar after 52 years was. Chamisha Asa Ba'av, the 15th day of Av. That was a tremendous holiday. And therefore we say in benching the fourth bracha. Who hate you, who made you, who hate you, who hate you. That's about the Harugay Beitar who were allowed to be buried. And the bodies did not disintegrate. Yes. Why was there such hatred that 100,000 people remained unburied for 52 years? Very good. This is a false Mashiach called Bar Kokhba. Uh, Rabbi Kiba was full. He thought he was Mashiach. He carried his cl- uh, towels to the bathhouse, like you have to be Mechab and Melech. But his other friends told him, Akiva, Ben Yosef, you're making a toss. He's not Mashiach at all. He's a phony. Akiva, the one biggest Tanoim. He was the Gilgal of Moshe Rabbein. He couldn't have him. He didn't catch him. He didn't catch him. Uh, he uh, couldn't do it. You know why he couldn't do it? They had a sense. They couldn't find out what's wrong with Kar- Bar Kochba. They couldn't, they didn't know what it was, but they sensed it. You know why? That intuition. Zechus Avos. Rabbi Akiva was a Ben Gerim. He didn't have Zechus Avos. His father was not a Gerim. Well, his grandfather was a Gerim. He didn't have Zechus Avos. He didn't hop it. Finally, he hopped it. He said to Bar Kochba one day, why do you take Jewish Jewish people in the Jewish army? Well, they're outnumbering us. He said, what do you need numbers for? Hashem, Hashem Malkichem, God is your king. Hashem, oh, God is doing war. War. He was making war. Yeah, what do you need? What do you want? Don't you trust in God? He saw that he's not a truthful person. He's not the Mashiach. He changed his name to Bar Kozeva. Kozev, liar, deceiver. Then he finally got caught on. But they knew ahead of time. He didn't have Schuss office. It was Ben Gerim. It has nothing to do with your own intelligence because he was as great as Moshe Rabbeinu. But 
He didn't have schus avos. They did. Something has to do with your avos and not to do with you. Some people just know the right thing about schus avos. And people have mazel in this world. Do schus avos. Yeah, your own schus too, but schus avos is a big thing. So um, he changed his name to Bakaziva. You're a fraud. Phony Mashiach. And we had many of them after that. What was his name? A hundred years later, Frank. And then he had Shlomo Malcha and David Ruveni. We have all these people, modern and ancient times, because the, 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 that, the Jew was so desperate. He wanted to, he wanted a way out. So that they allowed the, 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 the Ruge Beit to be buried. Okay, that's the well, third reason. The fourth reason is they Yom Tabar Magol. The day that the scythe around the uh, 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 cutting knife that you cut grain with, they broke that. They didn't mean they broke it. They put it away, didn't cut no more wood for the Mizbeach because when the sun gets weaker after two Ba'av, because the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer, and the sun is not so intense anymore, there could be found tiny worms and maggots in the wood that they used for the Marocha of the Mizbeach. So they didn't cut any wood after two Ba'av. There's other reasons, many reasons. Why this day, a few days ago, was a big yanti. The main thing is about the girls and the boys getting married. In the Krum, can you imagine? On Yom Kippur, there was no Yetzirah, it says. Why on Tuba Av was no Yetzirah? Because the Jews were saved. 15,000 plus did not die on this day when they're supposed to. Isn't that a tremendous yanti? Now let's learn the parasha of um, Akeb. Beth Khanon, I told you we missed last week due to busy schedule. And we hope we can do a, a next month out here every day in the, in the, in the garden of, <laughs> of uh, any time uh, estates, Torah, any time estates. Let's look at the Pasha Akim. As you know, the fifth book of the Torah, Mishnah Torah, is a Musa book. Moshe is rubbing it in, or he's really giving it to them for 37 days till he died on the Zion of Adar, and he started 37 days before. Rosh Chodesh Shvat, all of Shvat, and seven days of Adar, 37. Then he was Nifter. And they spent 30 days mourning for him to the seventh day of Nisan. And then three days later went across the Yardin. And tenth day they made, they got ready the carbon Pesach, four days before Pesach. And they ate the carbon Pesach at Eretz Yisrael under Yeshua. So, now let's look at this Akeb. Devarim, beginning of Akeb. Devarim, Zion, Yudbeis. If you will listen, to the social organi- or, 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 uh, ordinances, mishpatim, laws and social order between man and man, and you will watch them, which means chazer them, repeat them, so you don't forget them, asis them and do them. So you have to listen, learn, chazer and do them. Just believing in God and believing in Shabbat is a wonderful thing. Won't do it. You have to do all the mitzvahs, the ones that you're capable. We're not able doing 613. I'm not a coin. I'm not a woman. They have different mitzvahs. I'm not a, I don't have a field. We have a certain few hundred mitzvahs now. Without the base of English, without korbanos. You smart them and you see some of them and do them. Oh, Shoma Hashem, the God will do for you. And the Herkhal will call for you as a bris. will keep the covenant. As a chesed, loving kindness, as a shin, nishbal, as a chesed, that you swore to your forefathers. Let us start right there. It will be if you. Tishmu, listen. Anybody who knows Hebrew knows that Akif does not mean if. Im means if. Why have Akif? Says Rashi. How you Akif Tishmu? Im if the mitzvahs, hakalos, the little ones, the easy ones. Sha'adam dosh be'ikvav, that a man steps on with his heel. Akif is a heel. Tishmu, you'll listen to the little stuff. Then Hashem will keep for you all the mitzvahs of the Torah, all the promises. The nation will be afraid of you. They'll run away. They'll be petrified of you. Which means if you keep the little mitzvahs, you certainly keep the big mitzvahs. If you're so medakdek on tiny little mitzvahs that most people ignore, you definitely keep the big mitzvahs. Give me an example of a little mitzvah. Yeah, you see a bird, and you want to take the chicks or the eggs, and you go like this. Woo! Or you make a little move with a bush. That's a little mitzvah. You just became a mitzvah deraisa. Shalech the shalech is aim. And uh, little, another little mitzvah. Putting on a talus cutting under here. Little thing. One second. Done. A little mitzvah. Putting up a mezuzah. Put in two nails. Bingo. There for 25 years. Or until you check it. That's a little mitzvah. If you do these little things carefully, 
and very little that things people don't or diving shmona esra not in two minutes. You medactic to die in eight minutes. Every word. You don't bench in uh, thirty seconds. You don't say a bracha for a, a drink in about a quarter of a second. You say baruch ato Hashem shachol niyeh b'varu. If you're medactic on little things, God will be. You certainly medactic on the big thing. Hashem will keep the promise of you. No, no guy will ever stand up against you ever. They're coming into a country with seven vicious, bloodthirsty nations. They're going to run away. Just by the sight of you. You're going to come and knock on the door there. And you reach up. We're here. You're out. And they're going to run away. But since the Miragla messed up, and they spent 40 years in the Midbar, 39 plus the one year they spent anyhow, because they learned the Torah for one year, uh, their Bargain were now prepared to take you on. It took seven years of Kibush. And seven more years of chiluk, subdivision of the land. But originally, God would, if you had trust in him totally, the guy would run away. That's how it was originally planned. That's why he had no wep- very few weapons. You're not an army. How do you take over a country that you've never been there? And the country they've been there for thousands of years. You tell them to, to, to get out. You're the new Balabatim. They're not going to fight. You know how God said? No, they won't. But you don't have trust. You do it the hard way. So, Bahayo um, B. Akev, those mitzvahs that people step on with their, when you walk, you know, your heel touches the ground first. No one thinks. If you do those mitzvahs that no one thinks about, you're very medactic. And little mitzvahs, God will keep for you every single thing. You'll, be, you'll have never a problem with panasa, shiduchim, health, sickness, nothing. It's a promise, it's a condition. Bahayo Akev, on that condition, that you are not, you are medactic on the little things that you're walking with your feet. Um, you know, another that's the shot. One in here, the drasha. Bahayo be Akiv Tishma. If you will listen, like the first Jew listened. Avram was not, lived to 175 and discovered Hashem at three. So for 172 years, he was a Torah Jew. Akiv is 172. If you're Koveya Itim the Torah every day of your life, Kuf Bey Zion, 172. There's many more things like this. But that's already drushes. Let's learn Pshat. If you listen, all the ordinances, and watch them, chazer them, not to forget them, see some of some, and do them, and God will keep for you, as a bris, the covenant, as a chesed, loving kindness, as a shenish of a he'll love you, he'll bless you, he'll increase you. He'll bless the fruit of your womb. Every child comes out healthy and normal, gesund and powerful. And pre the fruits of your field. Most people were in agriculture. Everything comes out zoomed out, jumbo side, vicious, luscious, big and juicy. And you have so much, you have to export it, you'll be very wealthy. Pre your grain, your grain, and your wine. Why do you call it Tirosh and not Yayan? Yayan or Gethen? Because Yayan brought so much sardis in the world, so much Araya, so much murder and killing and drunkenness. You don't want to use the word Yayan. You use Gethen. Uh, Tirosh, rather. Tirosh means Gorash. You squeeze out the juice. Do you know that all wine, all wine is clear? Every grape. We have grapes over here. Uh, we have uh, uh, blue grapes, purple grapes, red grapes, white grapes. All the juices are clear. How do you get red? Rosé and this and that. You put in the skins. And grape, uh, wine grapes are not the ones you eat in the store. They're little, tiny berries, round, little things. You put it in the peel, it comes out red, blue, purple, whatever. Uh, the, uh, so it's tirosh is your wine. But you stuff that makes so hard, so hard shine. That's oil. Why don't you say shaman? Oh, we talked about this so many times. Shigar alafech, shigar alafech, the offspring of your cattle. The ashros and your strong products of your, of your flocks like goats and sheep. Al Hadam on the land of Shenishbal of Zechel that God swore to your forefathers, the says Loch to give to you. Work to Yemen Kalam, you'll be blessed more than all the nations. Lo Yi Yebacho Akka, there'll be no sterile men amongst you. Ubakar, no barren women. Ubim Techa, your animals also, everyone produces. The Hesha Shemim Choko, Holy God will take away from you all sicknesses. You know how many sicknesses there are in the world? There's only 98, because Kol Choli is 98. Kol Chavlam is 20, 30, 50. And Choli, 30, 48, uh, 30 and 48, and 50, 40 is 98. All diseases are in these 30, 98 categories. Kol Choli. 
Uh, you won't get sick from nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Called my Vim Mitzrayim and all the sicknesses and depression of Mitzrayim, Haroyim, the bad ones that you know about because you were there when I gave them ten plagues there. I show you that you know about them. Lo, you see my book, I'm not going to put it on you. When the son of Bechol said, I'll give it to all your enemies. Bechol, you eat as Kola, I mean, eat them all up. You eat them up. There'll be no opposition. You eat up the nations. You get rid of them. Bechol, this Kola, I'm not sure Hashem, the Kechon, those are Loch that God has given you. Those Sochel say, any Chalem, don't have any pity on them. Because they get you in their hand, they'll tell you to tear you apart. Those Sochel, they never them, don't have any compassion. The Kale Melech Rachamon is telling you not to have any compassion on these people, the Kananim. He knows better than you what vicious people they are. He knows what people they are. That's why he told you to go into their country and chase them out. And when Yeshua went, to, and then they always surrounded them in three directions. They have a right to escape. If they want to fight, no prisoners. The Sechai called Neshama. And since during the next 400 years after that, they left some prisoners over. That's all the Tzor is coming from them. Look at the Bush, the Bush, the Sefer Shoftim. Shmuel, because they didn't listen to Hashem. For how does call on them? You will eat up all the nations. Hashem, Hashem, look at the nose of the God is giving you. No sockets, any chalem don't have any compassion on them. No sabbat, the Sahim don't worship their gods. Kim Kom, no Keshu, it's a trap. They had tremendous desire for the Buddhist You can't imagine today, why would I want to bow down to a gold idol or a wooden thing or a stone statue? Why? Why? It's ridiculous, right? We have the same thing today in a different type of sin. Overdone interest in Arayos. It's the same with Vodazor. It's a drive. It's a Lehim Achim. It's another force that drives you. Overdone, way out of proportion. That's because the mind plays games with you. It's the same stupidity as a as Vodazor. Hashem, there was Mespalo, the Chacham were Mespalo to take away the Yetzahara of Vodazor. But yeah, every person has to have Yetzahara, otherwise, you have no free choice. So he gave you Arayos. If you say in your heart, means if you think, Rabbi Magoyim Ha'eli many, there are too many. I can't handle them. There are too many. How can I drive them out? Lo siro. Don't have any fear of them. The thinking leads to emotion. I tell you not to have fear. I'll take care of the problem. Remember years ago, when 40, 50 years ago, you go into a Greyhound bus and says, sit and back and enjoy the ride. Leave the driving up to us. You do the mitzvahs. I'll take care of the rest, Hashem says. No fear of to have no fear of them. No fear, no emotions. The Zohar remember very well. What God did to Pharaoh, he's a pretty powerful man, wasn't he? Well, the whole Mitzrayim, the whole Egyptian army, they never pursued you. Pursued you that when you left Mitzrayim, they never even the army was defenseless. They were the they were they were, they were powerless. On that night of Mitzrayim, when you left, how come the Egyptian army didn't try to stop you? Three and a half million people. Um, I did what I did to fire the Homer's Ryan, Hamasos, the tests, Agdolos, the big ones, that your eyes saw, but also the signs, the Dam and the Nochesh, Hamosim and the ten plagues. I have a Hayyar Chazok in the five, the first five of the plagues, but Yor Chazok, God smites them. I saw in the two of you, the last five that he took you out of the Mitzrayim with, he picked, plucked you out from the Mitzrayim, there with the tenth plague. The last five is called Yor Chazok. Yor Chazok is the first five. Hazro had the two Yor, the outstretched arm, take you out of that country. It's leading up to, to Marcus Bechoris. Asher, Otsi, Yachol, Hashem, and Kechol, God took you out. Ken Yas, Hashem, and Kechol, Chol, Amen. God will do the same thing to any nation that stands up against you. If you keep the other side of the bargain. Chol, Amen, Asher, Yato, Yori, Mekhan, that you're afraid of them, don't be afraid. Megam, Satsiro, the hornet, I'm going to send a hornet, an insect that will bite them and sterilize them on the bottom and blind them on top. You're very worried about that. The Gamma said, because they're going to be in caves and looking for you when you come by, they're going to ambush you. God will take care of them. Gamma said, Cyril the Hornet. Some say, Yellow Jacket. Yashal Hashem, bomb God will send against them. And Avod, and Hanisham, to I will destroy the leftovers. And he stored them, left that are hiding and hiding from one against you. Lo, Sarod, don't cringe. They put name because of them. Kashem, the Kachem, the Kachem, God is amongst you. What is your problem? El, God of Noah, he's very powerful and fearful. No shall Hashem look at us and go him. That'll pluck off the nations. Or all these be put in front of your face, right in front of you. Me'atmat little by little. Lo sucha kalos omahay. You can't wipe them all at one time. Ten tier ba'ale or lecha chayes asod. If the whole country is desolate, only for you, and then the animals will see nobody around. They're going to eventually move in 
and one domestic property into the towns, into the villages, into the farms. There's no people. So he's going to get little by little get rid as you move on into the country they get rid of the goyim. So the animals won't take over the country. <coughs> There's other meanings for pensir ba'alecha chaisa sada. That's the chaisa sada increase upon you. There's deeper meanings for all this. When the son of Hashem, the son of Hashem, the cattle of Hanecha, God will put them in front of you. The homam humagdolo. Put them in a mass confusion. They'll kill each other. You won't even have to do anything. Adi shom dom until they destroy themselves. When the son of Hashem, when Hashem Yochan, he'll give over the kings into your hands. Their princes, their prime ministers, their chiefs, their chiefs, their imams or whatever they call them, will be in your hands. Sounds like fantasy, right? When no son malchayim be yodecha, you just wait. Mashiach is coming. Vavadet em shemam, you're going to straight erase their name. Vitachel hashemayim on from under the heaven of earth, under the heaven. Lo, as you see, each of the no man will ever stand up against you. Ad he shmidicha osom till you destroy them. Vesileheim, vesilei Eloheim, the images, three dimensional images, statues. Pus sil means to chalk and take away, to carve away. They're talking about a statue, a three-dimensional statue. A two-dimensional is called a tmun, or a picture. A psila, a, a, a engraving images. Salme, he says uh, in, in Uncle, Selim. Some kind of three-dimensional figures, statues. Tzil b'sela heim, tismu b'esh. You can burn it in fire, if it's wood, or if it's metal, melt it in fire. Los sachmo kesev, don't take any, don't desire any silver and gold that's on them. It's all part of the vote of Los sachmo kesev azov alehim. Don't lust any silver and gold on them. Don't even want it. But take it for yourself. Pentavokish, lest you call up, you'll be in a mo case, you'll be caught. Because little by little by little you'll be tolerant to them because you have all that gold on them that you took. Pentavokish bok, he told us the Shem Lekechu, it's an abomination of God, anything associated with the Buddha Zora. Yes. Okay. Don't bring any abomination into your house. Don't bring any of the Zara, even if you don't believe in it. If, but if it's a nice sculpture of an animal, you know, you go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, you see all these statues of men and animals and women carved out from the Roman times 2,000 years ago. Statues and big animals and e- eagles and pythons and snakes and human beings, and they worship human beings and animals. Uh, don't bring this any statues of this in your house. The Soviet to Abel, they don't bring anything abomination in your house. All your hair come out because you'll become like that. You'll become taboo and worthless too. What does that mean? Don't bring anything in your house that's connected Hashem's and Torah das. Don't bring anything in your house. No magazines. No other video stuff. Don't bring it in your house. Koevo sounds like TV, doesn't it? Don't bring an abomination past that door that said Shin Dalid Yud. You put that sign up, didn't you? That was also Shin Dalid Yud. And you bring it to Ava in your house? Your Migdash Ma'at? That you want to cut yourself off from the current culture? Any culture, any time, any place, anywhere in the world. That's not our culture. We have a superior one. We are Am Hashem. We are the, you want miracles to happen for you? We have to deserve it. You've got to live differently. You cannot violate the laws of the country if they're not, don't violate the Torah. Gezel Akum is also no cheating, lying, and stealing. No, nothing, no disrespect for the local authorities, for, for, for laws and customs. But no to Ava, that you cannot have to bring in your house. It's like our Vic DeMille used to say, to have a television in your house is like having a toilet sewer running through your living room. Why would you want that in a Jewish house? You light Shabbos candles, and you, you have Sfarim, then you have filthy things in the house. Can't have them. Lo sovito evil besecho. Don't be nothing that is anti Torah. One guy told me, he called me from Eretz Yisrael, he bought Shuva 20 years, 15 years already. He was a big musician. He loved John Lennon from the Beatles. And he says, you now he's in Israel and the kids are reading Beis Yaakov and Yeshiva. They told me, take down that picture of John Lennon. What do you think, Rabbi? I said, you didn't take it down yet? Put it on the street. Sell it, yeah, go sell it for 5500 what are you doing hanging up there next to the Chavetz Chaim? Or, or, or some Sephardi, Chacham, or some Chesedic Tzadik? You put up a picture of him. Come on, don't you see the difference? 
take it down immediately. Only Torah pictures around your house or beautiful uh, 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 settings, you know, kind of the waterfalls or fruits, portraits of Sadiqim. Don't put in your house where you have mezuzah in every door. Those kind of people that represent gutter culture. Yeah, gutter culture, correct. I mean, don't worry. I'm not, I know what's going on. I grew up my life, my whole life. Yeah, I know exactly what's going on. I didn't live in New York all my life either. I know the score. Mm, and you do too and therefore you know what I'm talking about and you'll be this taboo like that what you bring in your house and have a loathsomeness for it and have an abomination for it it's taboo it doesn't say have a loathsomeness for Chazer or for Arayos it doesn't say that in the Torah don't, don't say the Gemara says don't say I could never eat Chazer ah from Jew never eat Chazer Swordfish, or, 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 or crabs, or eels, or, 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 never. Pork, no. Don't say that. Don't say, I can never do those immoral things that people do. No, don't say that. Kamara says, say it. Efshi, I could eat a ham sandwich, yeah? and I could have a rice with a beautiful woman. But my, see, what much should I do? Obi should be Shemayim. I have Father in Heaven, God's are like, commanded me not to. There's no personal abomination for that, it's just restriction. When it comes to this stuff, you have to develop a personal loathsomeness, an echo in Yiddish, a disgust. What's so bad? Shakates the shaktseno, make it mushukats disgusting. Abu is always disgusting. Taiv an abomination. Kichirun with taboo. Shake, why? Avodah is a corruption of the mind. Only human beings were given rational minds to think irrationally. An animal can, cannot think rationally, only irrationally. The thing is, he's hungry, he wants to mate, he wants to kill, he wants to eat, he wants to release his spells, it's normal. We can think that Beethoven is better than Brahms, red is better than green, seven is higher than six. There's another human being in South Africa. Horses don't know there's another horse in South Carolina. They don't know they're going to die. They don't know there's a God in heaven. They're conscious. Only human beings are self-conscious. But that brain, all the science that people discovered, all the Torah that you looked at, Abdul, that you're going to use for Avodah Zorah, the worst of the worst of the worst crimes. Having an uh, eating chazer, that's what people eat. So you have to eat kosher. You don't, you don't eat trade, but eating is normal. And having to uh, rely relations is normal. If it's a Jewish woman, Kedushan, yeah, they're married, not in need, or fine. But Avodah Zorah is a sheket. It's an abomination of the mind. It's a corruption of the gift God gave you, the brain. You can't figure out that they're bar- bowing down to a man-made piece of gold or silver or stone. It is such a ta'us, it's so, un- it's so obvious that it's a corruption of the mind. It's called prostitution of the mind. You are not faithful with your mind, God. The most precious gift is your brain. Only a human being can write and read and talk. And that you corrupt. That's worse than all Chazar and Navais. You're not supposed to do that right. It's a terrible error. But you're not supposed to have a loathsomeness. Most supposed to have a loathsomeness for this stuff. Okay, Rabbi Isai, if you want to hear more, I have 1,540 shorim on Kol Halosham. 646. What is that? What that number is again? National, all of the United States. One number. Call at any time. There's about 180 people on there. But if you want my chumash here, you have to dial <coughs> after the number 11101. But let me give you the number. The number is... 906... 6,400. No. 646-977-7900. The, the new Israeli number. You go directly to Israel, starting a year and a half ago. You hear all the shiurim from Israel, from America, instantly. Instantly, playback. Not like the New York, where they only have American shiurim. And they import the Israeli shiurim, but we have it instantly. It's the new headquarters in B'nai Barak. It's called Kol Uh My here, you can, one second after you record it, you can play it back. 646, all the United States. No, just a local number, but it's the Israeli connection. 977-7900, prompt 11101. And you can get my latest year. If you want to get the one before, you hit 21. And 21 goes back, and 21 goes back, and 23 goes forward. Okay, Rabbi Isai, have a good week. We'll see you after the chasana next week.